is it recording let me see yes it's recording well guys I wanted to talk a bit about self-preservation and I'm say loyalty you see I was watching uh, basically listening to it because well it was an audio recording that they posted online let me go to history um, let me see where is it where is it it's down here somewhere basically it was a recording of a man talking about the new world order the Illuminati and all those stuff but he wasn't really talking about conspiracy theories he was talking about the spirituality behind it and he made clear that many people only want to have you know, they would just want okay here it is I'm not going to play it for you guys but you can YouTube it yourself but what Henry Marco basically said in this recording and let me see it's quite old from 2011 he said that many people just want to have you know an easy life you know they are willingly to to praise whatever pays them so for example if you have churches who proclaim the name of Jesus and those churches hire them and pay them then they will talk about Jesus they will sing about Jesus they will even wear, Chris, wear, wear Christian clothes and they may even preach but if a satanic church would um, hire them then they would preach Satan they would promote Satan's uh, principles you see and he was talking about that he is a bit disappointed let, 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 I'm paraphrasing now, I'm saying it in my own words he was basically sad that during past 70 during um, this generation is primarily the and through late history for past centuries it was m from the majority the satanists and occultists who had a lot of money and because they have a lot of money even till this day they are they are capable of paying people to advance their agenda and because of that many people join them because they get paid he would he preferred that the children of god had the money so that they we could pay people to do to advance the kingdom of god now i wanted to respond to that and understand well i'm not attacking um henry mccoe here absolutely not i'm not attacking anyone what i wanted to make clear is the following if you have to pay someone in order for them to be at good terms with you then they're not really at good terms with you at all listen to what i'm saying here let's say you have christian millionaires who pay and they go through the ghetto and through foster homes and they basically recruit some young people they pay the money in order to sing about jesus and to make youtube channels where they talk about jesus christ and how great the lord is well people will notice this and they will say hmm there are quite some young people talking about jesus they see they look very excited however are they really excited for the lord jesus are they really interested in the truth no they're only interested in their paycheck so i want to say this because there are christians who desire to have a lot of money so they can further the kingdom of god on the earth now i'm not against christians having financial resources the bible is not against this jesus christ isn't against it just realize just because you pay someone does not mean that they are converted and that's what satan is doing satan is paying off many young people when they recruit into one of his religions you see haven't you noticed that there are people who are practicing satanists and or they have joined some other cult and immediately doors are opening for them 
they get jobs easily, they graduate easily, things go easily for them. And think about it, because things are going easy for them, they get a lot of attention, they become popular. Why? Because that's the desire of all unregenerated people. Everyone who's not born again, they are looking for their best life now. They are looking for their best experience now. They have no hope, they have no, no expectation for the future, so they want to have a comfortable, self-fulfilled life now. That's, what, that's the selfish desire of every human being. Okay, So when someone comes by and they have a so-called self-fulfilling life, no money problems, no annoying people, they have a self-governed, self-determined life, you see, that's what the world worships. So when you pay someone to fulfill a role and you, in the payment, you give them a house, lots of parties and all of that, of course they will promote, they will be your evangelist, of course they will promote your agenda. And many times we even agree with agenda because it benefits them. But the moment you stop paying them, they will curse you out. You see? So, but that's how the world works. You see? Man, people agree with evil, people agree with uh, abusive governments, people agree with um, collective crimes. Why? So they can have a comfortable life. They don't want to give up their so-called comfor comfortable life. So that's why they uh, support everything that will assist their comfortable life. Does that mean that they agree with it? No. Just think about this, guys. Every year, around May, April and May, people remember the Second World War. The horrors that happened through Nazi Germany. Do you seriously think that most Germans really agreed with Hitler? I'm not saying that there weren't many Germans agreeing with Hitler, okay? But do you seriously think that those German people and also those other nations within the borders of the German Empire, do you really think that all of them agreed with Hitler? Do you think that they, they really agreed with all the regulations? No. The thing is, Germany was in an economic crisis during the 30s and people were starving, some people even died of hunger, and folks wanted to get rid of those harmful consequences. They wanted to preserve their life. So, anyone who came by and was willingly to offer them what they wanted, they became loyal to. So, listen to this, many people are only loyal as long as they get their paycheck. The moment they don't have their paycheck anymore, They'll turn on you, they'll betray you, or they'll, they'll become envious of you and they'll tear you down. You see, and that's what I want you guys to think about for a moment. Because often people ask the question, why does God allow Christians to go through trouble? Why doesn't God intervene earlier in our lives? You see, some of you, yes, let me say, many of you are older than me, some of you are in your 40s or in your 50s already. Some of you are still young, but we all have, have been through circumstances that were harmful and painful, that were dangerous, and later on we found out, Lord, we, 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 we no, not found out, but we asked God, Lord, why didn't you intervene? You were not okay with what happened. You, were not, you didn't agree with it. Your word makes clear you don't agree with it. Why did you allow me to go through that? Why didn't you send a prophet or someone on my way to teach me earlier? You see? I'm just, I'm almost 24 now. And I haven't lived that long on the earth. But certainly, there, are, there, there is certain knowledge I know now. That if I would have known that 5 or, let me say, 8 years back. Whoa, I would have made totally different decisions, you see? And I, I too ask God often, why, Lord, why did you t wait till now? Why? You see, but you need to understand this. I'm not trying to give an answer to your question here, because I don't know your exact circumstance, okay? What I do want to tell you is that God is protecting you by not, you know, intervening when you expect it. Just think about this. If the Most High would intervene every time demons or humans or orchestrated evil against you, then what would be your testimony? 
your only your testimony would be God intervenes every time things go wrong with me. So that's why I'm happy with the Lord. Now, why are you happy with the Lord? Because He makes my life comfortable. He makes my life at ease. You know what the world is going to say then? The world is going to say, you see, they only worship God because God is kind towards them. And then, you know, then it's another thing. Then people are going to ask other questions. Okay, so God is making your life at ease. Why isn't he making my life at ease? Why isn't he make why is he allowing those young girls to be raped or sold into slavery? Why is God allowing um young men to be sodomized by uh predators? Why is it God you see? And the thing is folks, there are many atheists that are using the problem of evil as an excuse for rejecting God. You see, it's not really about evil because the Bible makes clear why God allows evil for now. Okay? But they're not interested in it. What those atheists are angry about is that they cannot force God to relate to them on their terms. And it's not just atheists. There are many unbelievers who have this accusation against the Most High. They have no problem with worshipping God and praising God as long as God conforms to all their terms. As long as God always prevents negative words against them, as long as God uh, prevents all gossip about them, as long as God always um, makes people like them, as long as they live in the best houses, drive the best cars, if all the children are polite and uh, healthy, as long as they can uh, have sex with the most sexy individuals that are around. You see, I'm just paraphrasing here, but I'm just making clear, many of those so-called unbelievers, atheists, satanists, luciferians, you see, they have no problem with the most high, as long as the most high bends to, uh, to them, as long as the most high makes them the center of everything. But the thing is, the most high does not make them the center of everything. You see, the most high does not give in to their greed, to their selfishness. And that's why they hate the Most High. And that's why they become angry when they see Christians getting blessed. Why? Because they don't want the terms of the Most High. But now Christians do accept the terms of the Most High and God is providing for them. God is making way for them. What does this and this means now that they are they feel left out. And what happens when they feel left out? They begin to blame. You see, they're the one rejecting God. However, they don't think logically. They're the one rejecting God, so it's their fault that they are, they are living without God's presence. However, they do not want to take responsibility, so they are looking for someone to blame. So, Christians who do follow the terms of God, they become the target. Okay? And as a target, God is protecting you by allowing some of your enemies to attack you. Why? Because this destroys their whole accusation. Because the whole accusation is that God is evil, God cannot be trusted, and they are using you as a, a, an evidence for their misery, for their case against the Most High. So what happens? The Most High allows you to go through stuff. God knows very well that they wish you harm, and God allows certain harm to come to you. But God does prevent you from being harmed. So the harm does come to you, but you're not being harmed by the harm. You understand? And by doing this, God is basically taking vengeance on his enemies. Why? Because God is al allowing them to do what they want to the full extent. And at the same time, God is converting what they are doing into your good. So God is vindicating Jesus Christ through you. Does this mean that you don't have to pray? Yes, because you are saved, you keep on praying, you you, fight, you you keep resisting the devil, you do all of that because you belong to the household of God. But the reason why God allows those attacks, the reason why God allows all those troubles, what God is basically doing is, God is making the camp of your enemies bankrupt because accusation is the only strong weapon they have because deception you know 
you you'll see through deception when you have the Holy Spirit, but accusation is the only thing they have. So that's why God allows them to use that power against you. But God is then uses his own power to convert their negative power into good for you. So God will not so God does intervene in your circumstance, but he does not intervene by preventing things. He intervenes by sustaining you and blessing you through all trials, persecution, and tribulation. Well, this is the feature I wanted to make, and I hope I've been a blessing to you, and God wants to make clear that you are following him because you love him, not because you're being paid. You see, because if God would allow everything to go well all the time, then which evidence will you have that you are truly in the right condition? Because as a human, you this, you have a longing for affirmation. And God is using your trials, persecutions and tribulations, and all the hatred of the enemy, and all the spells that people are enforcing upon you. God is using what they intend for evil, for your good. And God will use all those attacks to affirm that you are all right in Christ Jesus. You see? God cannot lie. Didn't Jesus say that in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcame the world? So by God allowing tribulation, he is affirming his word that he cannot lie. You see? We get to see things from God's perspective. Okay? Now, you don't have God's perspective because you're not God, but we see... We feel, let the Holy Spirit guide you. We'll begin, begin to see things from His perspective. Okay. Well, that's it for now, guys. May the grace of Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus be with you, and be blessed.